Welcome to Community Updates, brought to you by the Oravana Project at oravana.com. Greetings once again, it's Travis. I'm a contributor to the Oravana Project. In this media release in our series on community, I shall begin to describe the experience of living in community. Here, I'll give you just a brief taste of our life together, a taste of what life could be like right now, in this very moment, if our thinking and actions were to extend far enough toward our own and all others' highest fulfillment. You see, the future happens through the now. So when people say that community is something for the future, then they become powerless to the potential for the creation of community in the present, while at the same time reducing the probable emergence of community in the actual future. The Oravana Project exists in part to co-create the emergence of a socioeconomically integrated city network in which purposefully driven individuals are fulfilled in their development toward a higher potential state of experience for themselves and all others. What if you had the opportunity to participate in the creation and operation of a living system, where the healthiest and most fulfilling choices were also the easiest ones to take? Imagine a city, a living space, where it is more enjoyable to walk or bike than to drive, thanks to the intelligent and integrated layout of the physical environment. Among community, as we walk through the majority of our beautiful daily life space, we experience a living socioeconomic system structured to coordinate decisions and the flow of resources for our fulfillment. Here, we experience intentional design that supports a high quality of life for ourselves and all others. It's an environment where our technology and economy serve us, not the other way around. It is an environment where our creations provide all of us with an abundance of access to life-enriching opportunities, maintaining a support structure for living better lives, lives in alignment with the development of our true potential. It is an environment that draws out the best in each individual. It pulls out from us the energy of happiness, well-being, and deeply felt love for one another and our universe. Community is so designed that it provides vast opportunities for outward exploration, as well as the space for us to go inward and experience our universal being. Here, our decisions and actions entangle one another in a direction commensurate to our highest potential. And yet critically, we still remain cognizant of the possibility of falling into ruts that draw out the worst types of thinking and behavior. In community, we intentionally choose patterns that facilitate greater fulfillment, and we use our intelligence to step aside those ruts that might otherwise cause us to fall into patterns that restrict our empathy and joy in life. As we move through our community, there is love, light, and intelligence in the expressions that we create and the structures to which we entrain. Picture a lifestyle and set of accompanying technological systems that enhance and do not suppress our own abilities. Community offers, and I will use a strong word here, a correct understanding of how we might all live better lives. And a lot of contemporary psychosociological experiments and epidemiological findings are showing the degree to which they are correct. Imagine the physical appearance of a community as a sustainable and integrated city system designed specifically to function for everyone's fulfillment. This is a city that is continuously up to date with our knowledge about how we could all live more optimally while drawing upon our inherent and individual strengths. We experience a space where knowledge is applied for the well-being and benefit of all. A lot of the work in this city has been automated to free up time for individuals to pursue their passions and greater interests. Here, automation and technology is intelligently integrated into an overall holistic socioeconomic design which primarily functions to optimize the quality of life of every individual. As we begin our journey through this city, through community, you pass by others and notice that people are smiling and brimming with enthusiastic enjoyment for life. You notice a strong sense of social cohesion and bonding, even amongst those whom you do not know personally. There is a feeling of togetherness in the atmosphere. Here. We live in ways that help ourselves and others for the better. We have an awareness of what kind of society we are slowly building. Our worldview is one that supports our own evolution and helps us become better human beings. It is not a complacent worldview. When others in our environment are feeling depressed or doing nothing constructive with their lives, then we see that as detrimental to everyone. In community, we recognize that we have a richer quality of life with healthy, happy, and educated neighbors. We flourish when we have a well-informed population with an abundance of opportunities for discovery, self-development, and contribution. 
In community, our thinking about how we may live a more optimized life is similar for each individual, in large part because we all have access to the same unified information space, including details about what resources we have available and what we each individually require. Our unified information model is informed by all entities, informs all entities, and orients all creations toward our greatest fulfillment. Everyone shares a common and coherently unified information model that directs and orients their lives, even though, on a daily basis, we may have very different individual purposes and goals. We may have different interests, but when we come together as community, we share a unified direction, orientation, and approach to life. In other words, we navigate in common. We have a common navigational space. We seek to bridge differences, and we work cooperatively. Cities and community are developed through the contributions and decisions of individuals themselves. Importantly, we recognize that divergences in how we navigate are likely to create animosity and conflict, and so we maintain an open, coherent, and well-informed space that we use to structure our lives together. We recognize that our values and understandings precede all technical application, and that the integrity of our values and understandings are only as good as how aligned they are with our life ground of human need, which is part of the common ground that we all share. Among community, we live and behave in ways that are truly important to us. Our understandings, values, and behaviors are consistently emergent. Here, we recognize that although everything is interconnected, in the moment, not everyone may be working toward the same personal goal, and so we create structures that are sufficiently flexible to allow for the expression of our individual interests. Imagine a vision of society that took our understandings of existent relationships to the next level and is constructed with the understanding that we are interrelated all the way down to our essence. We maintain, one might say, a cultural awareness that is based on a valid recognition of the laws of nature to which we are all bound. We use what nature gives us, which is all we can do. Our decisions are not about who is right and who is wrong, neither are they concerned with profit and loss. Instead, they involve a holistic view of the data and are about what works and doesn't work toward our survival and flourishing. We perceive the world as malleable, and it is our daily work, our purposeful intention, and our lifestyle that organizes it in a way that makes us all better or worse off. Now, as you watch others go about their daily lives, you feel the embrace of a familiar setting, a remembrance of something long forgotten, interwoven with the most pleasing architecture, enriching opportunities, and natural surroundings. We are natural beings, and we come from that setting. It only makes sense that the more we construct in alignment with natural processes and spend time in nature, the better off we will be. So, picture a city in which food cultivation and natural beauty are integrated into all available and desirable spaces. In this city, there are no prime locations. Instead, everyone has access to a prime location. Here, we walk around our living environment and freely pick a variety of flavorful and nutritionally dense foods without worrying about pollution and other toxic residues. Observe that we harvest some of our own food, while we also have automated services that deliver precisely what we require. Like the experience of our ancestors in nature, dietary diversity equals dietary sufficiency. In other words, and relatively speaking, the more diverse we eat, the more likely we are to pull in the nutrition we need. As we continue our journey around the city, you look out and notice a sense of spaciousness, as well as the highly efficient, symbiotic use of that space. This experience may be contrasted with modern society, whose constructions are boundary-focused, which is very much unlike how a natural landscape is viewed. In modern society, the constant need to evaluate where one can and cannot go has a strong impact upon the psychology of individuals therein, and it changes the way one thinks about everything. Alternatively, when we come together to share in our fulfillment, we dissolve those artificial boundaries toward the benefit of all, for if they were to remain, we realize that they would create disharmony for all. We realize that there is a relationship between our conceptual and material structures and our well-being and lifestyle therein. Think of a city in which all goods and services are free, as in nature, so that we don't become constrained or limited by the abstract intangible known as money and hence disconnected in our ability to accurately sense and appropriately respond to environmental signals. Here, we share information, products, designs, and other resources freely and without restriction. Consider what life would be like if neither you nor anyone around you was worrying about money, which fractures the relationships and cognition of so many people in modern society. If people have access to the necessities of life, they don't steal. 
And crime, as it is known in modern society, is rendered almost non-existent. Among community, we seek to improve what we have, and we share our improvements with others. Furthermore, we understand that there are limited resources and that we can optimize the usage of those resources for the benefit of everyone. Consider this. If all the money in the world suddenly disappeared, but topsoil, production facilities, and other resources were left intact, we could build anything we choose to build and fulfill any human need. It is not money that people need, but access to the necessities of life without having to appeal to an authority figure. Or, think about it this way, there are technical solutions and resources aplenty to solve all of the real world's needs and problems, but there isn't enough money, or political will, in the artificial world that modern society has created to implement them. It isn't money that enables us to do things. The notion that things are free in community is something of a misnomer, because there is no money in community. Money is a social construct. There is nothing like it in nature. There is no physical referent. People's belief in it is the means and the ends. Furthermore, money isn't anything that you can use on hand. It is the potential, a controlled and limited potential, to get what you need. And so people want to keep that potential amongst themselves, or only a few very close-knit individuals. Hence, they will hoard the money itself as a resource, which is widely known to occur when indigenous cultures are forced to use it. Then, they begin hoarding other resources that may have monetary value. When living in a capitalist society, it only makes sense to hoard things that could possibly be converted into cash. Sharing breaks down, and we start noticing a loss of contentedness and a loss of happiness, while a loss of core meaning and identity in life starts to emerge. Then nepotism and hierarchy. Herein, money itself becomes a claimed resource, and it is not possible to sustain community when some people hoard resources. In fact, community emerges in a world where everything has been coordinated to be accessible without the need for exchange. In modern society, people are constantly under threat of losing access from a reduction in monetary store or income, which often means a loss of their property and a reduction in their power to purchase access. In other words, their purchasing power. Because of the necessity to continuously pay for access, competitors require a continuous store of money and or source of monetary income. In general, they are in a constant state of fear of losing that which they presently have access to, as property owners and as consumers. Hence, they are incentivized to collect and hoard resources. Remember, and this is very important, community cannot be sustained when some people hoard resources. In community, as in nature, it doesn't cost money to live and thrive. In modern society, humans are the only beings that have to pay to live on the planet. Instead, in community, the highest quality goods and services are coordinated to be accessible to everyone without the interference of exchange, money, barter, or servitude of any kind. We want everyone to have access to what they need without the burden of having to follow the dictates of an authority or purchase, maintain, and ensure that which they are accessing. Consider a living style where we don't have to in other words, aren't coerced to engage in material or behavioral exchange or worse yet, pander in order to flourish. Cities in community are populated by people who do not have to keep a career in order to survive and maintain access to all that humanity has to offer. There will never be enough employment for everyone on earth to earn enough money to sufficiently fulfill their needs, but there are enough resources if we plan and coordinate our efforts. Here, our motivation for doing things in life is intrinsic, meaning from the inside out, the fulfillment of our needs, and not extrinsic, such as the monetary reward one gets from having a career or the punishment one avoids from not following orders. Here in community, we don't improve ourselves to improve our career, we improve ourselves for ourselves, our significant others, and for everyone in community. Our goals and aspirations are not mediated by money, and so we have a more direct outlook on life and on what is important to us. Maintaining a career means that one has to be right, or at least appear to others as being right. If you are right and they are wrong, then they are no longer leaders in the market, in other words, the competitive global game, which is very threatening to people in competition, and certainly threatening to their careers. Socioeconomic competition invites challenge and opens a pathway for advantage over others. Such a dynamic incites conflict, and conflict brings catastrophe to both sides. In community, since our lifestyle, our livelihood, isn't dependent upon being right and maintaining a competitive advantage, we have more open and active minds. 
which allows for a greater clarity of thought and the expression of science in its essence. So ask yourself, what would a lifestyle look like when unadulterated by the need to gain some kind of market advantage over a competitor, or simply for the sake of profit? Jobs are for machines. In community, where the majority of laborious effort is handled by technology, we are free to acquire a deeper knowledge of ourselves and the universe. We have the time and access to verify what others claim, which facilitates a harmonious living situation for all. When authoritarian and market bias is not present, then science presents a language without ambiguity and with little interpretation. Its application at the level of our socioeconomy represents a technical, referential tool for reducing misinterpretation between people who are in constructive communication. Science gives us a methodical, quote-unquote, blueprint that is similarly interpretable all over the world. The scientific vocabulary works everywhere. In modern society, there is an abundance of misinterpretation and no real-world reference for language. Science gives us a method for solving problems and one possible approach for how we can improve our lives. Imagine what life would be like if we weren't constantly misunderstanding one another, misinterpreting one another's intentions and behaviors, and misunderstanding our deeper desires. Without a commonly precise language, it is not possible to build efficient, complex, technical, and socially meaningful structures. Hence, in community, we recognize what we can accomplish when we approach life with similar rigor. Let's continue on our journey and now begin to imagine what life would be like if we all didn't have to compete against one another for access to life-serving resources and life-enriching opportunities. What is available to us through the synergy of our efforts is greater than what is available when we compete. And this is something we all understand. It is one of the reasons we have come to participate in community in the first place. Hence, as you look out over the city, you notice the efficiency and effectiveness, the harmony by which we meet all human needs, wants, and preferences. Food, energy, transport, and production, for example, have efficiency as a core priority in their designs, which is a necessity for the sustainability of complex technological systems. Our constructions are designed to meet our requirements in the best possible manner with the least usage of resources and effort. We do as much as possible with as little as possible, and what we create is highly durable and yet also highly updatable. Conversely, in modern society, such designs are generally too expensive. The costs of trying to create a sustainable and efficient city inside a for-profit paradigm are simply too high, which is one of the reasons we don't see a single city optimized for human well-being in modern society. There is very little that is sustainable in how cities in modern society are designed or the monetary-driven social values that have been adopted by their constituents. Ask yourself, what does sustainability look like in practice if the goal is to have cities that work well for us in the present without causing problems for ourselves and the rest of the world in the future? As a city, community is a place in which all of the tasks, in other words jobs, are actually worth doing. We all know what needs to be done, and we participate in the community's continuation and evolution whenever so desired. Our time is our own. It is not structured by an authority figure. Here, opportunities for access, self-growth, and contribution are ever-present. And our contributions directly benefit us, as opposed to working for the direct benefit of someone else. All work as effort applied toward the community's continuation and evolution is relevant, and everyone owns their own time. How would it feel to live in a place constructed to express conditions of interest in your well-being, as well as facilitate empathic concern for the well-being of others? It may feel like a city that has been designed openly by all of us and for all of our well-being. The city you see before you is entirely open, source, and free shared. Anyone can contribute and can check the work of others to ensure that the most efficient and effective methods and designs are being used. The result of our openly sourced way of living is that there is the maximization of our potential quality of life and neither hoarding nor fighting over ownership. In community, in community, technology is used to advance humankind in positive ways. We engineer systems that free our population from all banal labor and human servitude. Further, we design technologies to ensure sustainable and regenerative systems. There is no externalization of costs or actions of living onto others of a lower socioeconomic class or onto the environment. In part, of course, this is because in community there are no socioeconomic classes. 
We recognize the harm caused by the monetary framework in externalizing structural problems. It rationalizes these problems as sourced from a person, place, or thing, such as unemployment because of quote-unquote lazy people, theft and harm because of the action of the corrupt, and supply and demand imbalances in the market as other than the market itself. In modern society, notice how there is no conversation within the monetary framework that examines itself as the root cause generator of negative social and environmental outcomes. Visualize the physical appearance of a city in which neither the market nor the state has been encoded, and therefore there is neither revenue nor taxation. Modern day living involves, and for the most part it requires, property ownership, and there are taxes and other fees that go along with that ownership. In order to have access, that sort of socioeconomic arrangement necessitates either having a job to pay for things or becoming a ward of someone else who pays for those things. Of course, cities in modern society consequently look and feel very different than they do in community. In the market state, cities are products and the people within them have little choice but to work for a boss, go on the dole, or starve. Oddly, there is a segment of this population that believes they have something called freedom of choice. What they actually have is the illusion of choice, because the options from which they can choose have already been decided upon by the structure of the system itself and the decision makers higher up in the socioeconomic hierarchy. And these pre-selected options are inescapable if survival is desired. In community, there is no commerce, no economic trade or exchange of goods, no socioeconomic classes or hierarchy, no politics, no bureaucracy, no police, no prisons, no trash, no poverty, no homelessness, and no congestion. When arriving in community for modern society, there is a sense of relief that these things that have held humanity's potential down for so long are no longer present. And still, community creates a city where children and adults alike play outside safely at any hour. As you consider such a space, feel the absence, again the relief, of not having any advertising or marketing present in either your physical or digital space. Sense the freedom here from the constant promotion of consumption and authoritarian dictates. There is no surveillance or misinformation, which are present almost everywhere in cities in modern society. And yet, the city looks beautifully upkept, it is intelligently laid out, and as you stroll along, you don't have to worry about walking on grass or other surfaces that have been sprayed with various killing substances, such as pesticides and herbicides. Imagine not having to wash industrial pollutants off your food or personally filter your water to remove pharmaceuticals, commercial byproducts such as sodium fluoride, and other industrial contaminants. Among community, we have a saying, systems are what they produce, not what we wish them to produce. Individuals in modern society have become habituated to the constant stimulus of commerce and advertising, which wears down, in other words, wears away, their sensitivities to their own needs and their environment. Imagine the experience of city life without trash or noise and light pollution. Over time, such pollution causes us to turn off from environmental stimuli. The continuously hostile environment of modern society causes people to not want to feel their sensory inputs. And that is the weirdest thing to imagine, that you have to stop perceiving your environment to keep yourself sane. Of course, the light pollution in modern society is affecting people's sleep, their circadian rhythms, and it prevents them from seeing the stars, which would otherwise provide them with a nightly connection to the larger universe. Among community, we don't feel the need to dull our senses. We also don't intentionally create a hostile environment that continuously berates us to act in ways that are not in our best interests, selling us more than we need, selling us food that causes disease, actively trying to make or otherwise persuade us to be unhealthy, while forcing us to compete against other human beings for that which has been made available. As humans, we have a deep need to believe that the smiling faces on television have our best interests at heart, or the smiling face of a doctor at a hospital who is prescribing treatment is doing so in a holistically informed manner for our best interests, and not overworked and hence underinformed or simply trying to pay off debt. Essentially, modern society creates an environment that is psychologically painful to those with their sensitivities still intact. Among community, the living environment itself almost feels like a single self-regulating and self-healing organism. Community is similar in this respect to the human body, which wants to feel well and heal, but needs the correct inputs as well as minimal interference from that which is malignant. It is a society run so efficiently and with organized care that it feels like it takes care of itself. All of those things that are essential for us to survive and thrive are integrated and engineered into a unified habitat service system, which we may otherwise easily refer to as a city. 
a city that mirrors the operation of our natural world, which is itself a collection of integrated systems. Our community city employs the scientific method, prioritizes efficiency throughout its design, has a cooperative versus competitive social structure, it is very high-tech and highly automated, and it is the result of a systems approach in managing its complexity. It is a world-benefiting platform for the sustainable advancement of humankind. Here we might ask ourselves, what would society look like if it inherited those properties of the universe that we see as its incredible harmony and mathematics and self-organization? And what would it look like if our intention for its creation was to be of benefit to the individual, of benefit to the social, and of benefit to the planet, and even possibly the very universe itself? Now, as we zoom out from one of these integrated city systems, we see a return to nature before a network of such cities appears in geometric formation stretching far off into the distance. When a city hits a certain size, we stop and let everything go back to nature between this and the next city. There is no urban sprawl. Here, each city is part of our unified community system and connected via mass rapid transportation. Now consider a network of these cities through which we share the living earth that perpetually surrounds us. Such a life is more than feasible if we were to consider all of the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all of the world's people, and we intelligently coordinated our use of them through a shared set of open source and free shared specifications so that we would all be better off. We continuously see the remarkable amount that we all have in common by virtue of being the same species on the same planet. Imagine community materializing into a network of cities without restriction on travel and where all of the services and amenities are free to everyone without any requirement for exchange. Experience yourself traveling within a network of generally circular, fully sustainable, access-oriented cities built for those who are actively engaged in living their life to the fullest. Inhabitants of all these cities see themselves as one human family. We may visibly in outward appearance look different in size and skin color, and may be positioned geographically on different areas of the earth, but we treat and share and cooperate with one another as a healthy family would do so in modern society. Some cities in the network may be composed solely of individuals of a single race, skin color, or ethnic group, but that does not separate us. Among community, we are not mentally nor socioeconomically divided by class, nation, gender, skin color, ethnicity, or belief. Why doesn't humanity deserve access to all the best that humanity has to offer? At any time, we could revisualize and then reconstruct our living system. Right now, in this very moment, we could start to reform that templated information model, that operating system that we share in our minds and encode into our environment through changes to its material, and now digital, structure. What we see around us is an expression of the consciousness of those who live here now. Together, we can reconstruct the environment of our present toward a more fulfilling vision. We can help those lost in delusion see that which is reality more clearly. In in essence, the creation of community involves revisualizing and reconstructing the environment around us to better serve us, our well-being, and the health of the ecological environment. When we look at it this way, we see that society is a representation of all of our perceptions and understandings encoded into our environment, and has no will of its own. Society is dependent upon what we make of it, and why and how we construct it. What's more, our only avenue to correct any flaws within our society is through our own perceptions and understandings and our willingness to represent them clearly for all to see, which is what we are doing with the design specifications and the Oravana.com platform. These specifications are our information model for community that we are sharing with the world and will use to reconstruct our environment toward one of greater flourishing for all. We can only reorganize the root structure of our socioeconomic living system together, and honestly, it feels good to know that we are in it together, neither one nor the other, but together. We can help each other fulfill our true potential. We can synergize our social and economic efforts toward an abundance and access to opportunities and experiences that facilitate our fulfillment and flourishing on this planet. When we build community, we get that community too. We can do and have nicer things when we think through our problems to their root and work together toward a commonly beneficial direction. Building community isn't only about building regenerative services and sustainable technologies, it is also about building togetherness among individuals who are awakening to their own abilities to integrate and connect and adapt to life oriented toward the prosperity of all. Community is a benefit to everyone. And the beauty of that awareness is that it embodies a new incentive structure that facilitates the true progress of humankind. I would like to leave you with a short mental exercise. 
Imagine the best and brightest, the most enjoyable and fulfilling life you can. What would your fulfilling version of the present look like? Picture how people interact with one another. Picture the architecture and the activities you are now participating in. And in this fulfilling present, what do you see people doing differently in their lives, especially their daily lives? Feel the close family friendships you share with so many of those who are also picturing this same or similar bright and beautiful present now. Pause, take a moment and ask yourself the following question. What can I do now to create a more fulfilling life for myself and those I love over the next few days, the next week, the next month, and the years to come? May we all live long and prosper. Subscribe to one of the Oravana Project's information feeds, like Twitter or our RSS feed, for we have more upcoming media releases in this series on community. And finally, you can also find the transcript for this media release on our website, oravana.com.